Hey comrades, welcome to the channel. I'm the Obnoxious Anarchist. Before I get started here, I want to say that I recognize that not all people who identify as anti-fascist necessarily support Black Lives Matter as a movement, although they ought to. And likewise, not all people who support BLM would necessarily consider themselves anti-fascist, although they ought to. But I also know that there are tons of anti-fascist Black Lives Matter supporters, this being of course the correct position to be in, as American style fascism is and always has been racist towards our black comrades and fellow workers. My goal here in this video is not to define anti-fascism or to paint the Black Lives Matter movement with a broad brush, but to talk a little bit about the shared goals between principled anti-fascists and the Black Lives Matter movement. That being of course the destruction of white supremacy and patriarchy. Liberal interpretations and analysis of the ongoing uprisings in the United States pit anti-fascists or antifa as white outside agitators who are trying to undermine the Black Lives Matter movement with violence. Even though there's evidence to the contrary, there are multiple reports of far-right actors trying to instigate violence at Black Lives Matter protests. I won't say right-wing groups are responsible for making the uprisings violent. That's bozo talk. The uprisings are a violent upheaval against patriarchal, white supremacist, and capitalist violence. But indeed, they are trying to sabotage them. Now, I don't agree with every single action done by a person in a black mask in the name of anti-fascism. But there's a clear history of anti-fascist and black liberation movements working together in the United States. Sometimes it's a checkered history, but it's an important history nonetheless. And yes, we need to learn from that shared history and make sure that anyone who identifies as an anti-fascist also identifies as an anti-racist. But white and black socialists have been organizing together in the United States ever since they could, and in many ways have challenged white supremacy concretely and made it shake at its knees. Here's where the Boog Boys enter the scene. Yeah, so the shirts have been linked to like the Boogaloo Boys. Is that is that what you guys associate with? Uh, I'm going for it. Yeah. yeah. As I said in a previous video, the Boogaloo Boys are a far-right group that actively works to muddy the waters in terms of what their political beliefs really are, and they fetishize and try to provoke civil war or race war. They try to act like they have common interests with anarchists on the basis that they oppose the state, but this isn't true. Anarchists combat the state to free its oppressed. Boogaloo combat the state to keep people oppressed and to maintain status quo. There are also multiple reports of Boogaloo Boys trying to make coalitions with BLM groups under the notion that they will help keep BLM protests safe from the dangerous Antifas. And I guess this video is just a warning about how these dudes are trying to subvert any kind of meaningful United Socialist front. While there can be successful coalition building between anti-fascists and Black Lives Matter, the same can't be said for other right-wing groups like the Boogaloo Boys or the Proud Boys. Well, let me correct myself there. Of course there can be coalition building between BLM and far-right groups, but it would be counterproductive and dangerous. The far-right in America is now and always has been anti-black, and we as anarchists want to root out white supremacy, whether it's blue, or red, or black. Boogaloo boys say that they have common interests with BLM protests, and that they both have a common enemy in the United States government in regards to the protection of their Second Amendment rights. Which is true, of course, in many ways, but you don't only make coalitions with groups based on shared problems. You coalition build with those who have like-minded solutions and end goals. And I guess that's where I'll end my thought. Be wary of this Boogaloo movement. They're known to want to incite race war, and this race war that they want to create is to distract from the very real class war that has been waged on us, the poor folks, for hundreds of years, and which continues today. The powers that be are terrified of a black and white working class united against a common enemy. That is, patriarchal and white supremacist colonial capitalism. This photo exemplifies white supremacist fear of white and black socialists working together in tandem for common goals. They think Antifa and BLM are coming together to become the totalitarian dystopian fascist government depicted in George Orwell's 1984, Ingsoc. Not only is this a debased version of what Orwell was actually trying to critique, but it's a prime example of a power dynamic gaslighting the resistance to it. They portray the resistance to their totalitarian capitalist hold as totalitarian itself. You see the sleight of hand that's played here? I'm not a totalitarian, you're a totalitarian. Or the version more common with children, 
I know you are, but what am I? I think it's safe to say that I really don't have very much bad to say about the BLM or Antifa movements respectively, but I do have a couple of small critiques. First I'll start with BLM, and this is just my opinion, but I guess I could critique it as being a little too obvious. Is it not sad that we need a movement in 2020 stating that black lives matter? Something that should be so obvious but needs to constantly be reiterated. I'd like to see BLM go from Black Lives Matter to Black Liberation Movement. And my critique of Antifa is pretty similar. Anti-fascism is about concretely locating and pushing out any kind of fascist organizing, be it online or IRL. It's not an identity fad and there's serious work to be done. I guess I'd just like to see a little more of a serious approach by both these movements, but that's just my take, and regardless, I still identify as anti-fascist, and I still identify as an accomplice in indigenous and black liberation struggles. Also, one short note I wanted to make about Antifa. People seem to think that all anti-fascists are white or something. Based on my own experiences, I'd say that this is totally false. For sure in areas with very high majority white population, you will have more white folks in these circles. That just goes without saying. And yes, anti-fascists all over need to make their spaces open and welcome to people of color. And not just in a metaphorical or performative way either, but to actually listen and give space to others. White people, specifically white cis dudes like myself, tend to take up too much space. And that's something we need to consider when we want to work with other comrades. Even if it comes from a place of good intentions and a real urge to contribute, it can still manifest as toxic. Well, that's it for today, comrades. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to like and share. Solidarity.